안녕하십니까. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Kyung Won of Online Surgery. Today, let's look at the surgical video and discuss about it. First, let's look at the panoramic image. 58-year-old female patient. Lower right, posterior area, implants are placed, but to the one in the middle, there's a lot of bone resorption and it doesn't look very good. However, the patient is saying that she's not facing any major discomfort and her chief complaint is lower left posterior area. There's a lot of mobility and pain and she wanted to solve this. Looking at CT number 5, alveolar bone has been resorbed significantly. In number 6, it was missing. Number 7, it is tilted mesially. And there's a lot of alveolar bone loss. The patient was in great pain and at initial visit, extraction was done. In the lower left posterior area, apart from number 6, which was already missing, number 5, number 7, which was tilted, and wisdom tooth was extracted. And in the case of this patient, she wanted surgery, and I plan for one guide surgery. Looking at CT in number 5, in the extracted area, alveolar bone on the buccal side there's a lot of resorption number six was already missing number seven was tilted in that area two implants were planned distance was going to be made between number five and six and in the area with resorbed alveolar bone gbr was planned as you can see in number five, buccal plate is resorbed significantly. It's like this. The mental frame is here. I contacted one guide team to design the one guide. In number five, mental frame is coming up like this. 4.5 in diameter and 8.5 in length. Implant was planned. And for number 6, there was distance with the inferior alveolar nerve. So one guided team and we decided to place TS3 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant, but the patient was female and considering the amount of mouth opening, I thought maybe we need to change to 8.5 even for the distal implant. Considering the patient's level of mouth opening during surgery, I placed a 5.0 by 8.5 implant. The alveolar bone, the bone density itself is approximately D2. In the case of 35, TS3 4.5 by 8.5 was planned. For drilling, after initial drilling, diameter 3.5 and 4.5 were planned for implant placement. In the case of 36, diameter 5.0, as mentioned before, on one guide, actually 10 millimeter is possible, but considering the patient's level of mouth opening, I decided on 8.5. After initial drilling, diameter 3.5 and 5.0 drilling was done for implant placement. As shown, two implants will be placed in number 5 and number 6 to, uh, for occlusion with the antagonistic teeth. And in the area with alveolar bone missing, bovine bone is going to be used for bone graft. Post-op panoramic image, two implants have been placed, as mentioned earlier, in the case of number 35, a 4.5 by 8.5 implant was placed, as was originally planned. Distal to that, there was distance with the inferior alveolar nerve, so the plan was 10 millimeter, but considering the level of mouth opening, 5.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant was placed and GBR was done on top. Bone graft was done.
As shown, mental foramen is here, 4.5 by 8.5 implant it was placed and distal to that, 5.0 by 8.5 implant was placed. On top of that, bone graft was done. In order to prevent alveolar bone resorption, bovine bone was used, a xenograft was used for GBR. Post-op CT shows that the implants were placed accordingly with our original plan and successful surgery was done. Let's look at the surgical video. One guided template was checked once again whether it fit well. Of course, I also did it before surgery. There was insufficient attached gingiva and a GBR was planned. Although one guide will be used, incision was made and surgery was proceeded with slightly reflected flap. Say ah. Say Just be at ease. Say ah. We are wider. Ah, see, ah. We're almost there. As mentioned earlier, considering the patient's level of mouth opening, I decided to place 8.5 implant. Say ah wider. No implants have been placed. Fifty-six. <laughs> Thank you. 
On the bone defect in the back bovine bone, AOS was used for bone graft. Collagen membrane oscide was used to cover here. One more layer was used, so a total of two layers of oscide was used. GBR was done only on top, so even without periosteal releasing incision, flap can be closed nicely. In this case, I wanted to tell you that even if you use one guide, you don't just blindly do flatless surgery. If GBR is necessary, make incision and place the implant using one guide, connect cover screw, and on top you can use bovine bone for a simple GBR. Two layers of collagen membrane were used and suture was done. Thank you for watching.